Jasmine Camacho Quim. She was the, she is number one in the nation so far this season. She's also the SEC and the NCAA 100 meter outdoor champion. Good reaction by Davis and Quinn. It's Sarah Davis over the first hurdle first. And Tanique Brown is also there. Here comes Camacho Quinn, and at the tape, it is Camacho Quinn defending her title successfully. Only woman under eight seconds in the field. She does so again today with 798. She has become a better runner. She has lost 20 pounds as you see the race take place right in the middle. Camacho Quinn in the pink top and the blue bottom so quick between those hurdles. You have to remain that sprinter type mentality even though you're going over the barriers in the middle in the pink. Tara Davis had a very great start but Jasmine Camacho Quinn is known for running always just under what the field is going to run. I'm with the champ. She's pretty in pink. She's also a champ at 798. 798 is a time that you think what of? Um. I wasn't really too focused on the time with this race. I was just trying to win. <laughs> so it was just, I'll take it, but I just wanted to get my title. All right, we'll take that. Uh, tell me about what's the magic that uh, the coach Florio has with the with the hurdlers? Um, uh, he's just, uh, he's I don't know. I mean, he's just he's the greatest when it comes out of the hurdles. Though I just listen to everything he say and then. Do what I do. Uh, Florial, he's a savant, and you're a champion. Jasmine Camacho Quinn, congratulations. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Edric Florial, a best fit for a lot of sprinters and hurdles in Kentucky. <laughs> Dwight, interesting that you said this is the perfect setup in lanes because Edric Florial told me that Sydney McLaughlin needs to control the speed of this race as from the pace from jump. He said, if Irby doesn't go out fast enough, you have got to go fast. There was an A, B, and C setup in order for her, Sydney McLaughlin, in the pink to get the pole position. And that is exactly what has happened. McLaughlin getting the pole over Lena Irby. I think that, that was Lena Irby's only chance to win this race is to take the pole away. Now, Sydney McLaughlin, it just doesn't look like she's running that fast. But when she ran 36-12 early in the season, we knew she was in for something special. Now, we're just looking at the clock. Sydney McLaughlin, the freshman, the Olympian from 2016 in the 400-meter hurdles, starting to tie up a little bit. And here comes Lena Irby, and McLaughlin holds on. 50-52, she, she beats the SEC meet record and just misses the collegiate record of Phyllis Francis because of stumbling there that last 15 or so meters. Coming into this stretch run, Lena Irby in the black behind her had a little bit of another gear, but Sydney McLaughlin's front end running mechanics and her hands, look at how high and how deep her hands come back and down. Hands are so important in this last 50, and Sydney's knee drive and her speed that she took out of that last curve was crucial in her being able to finish that strong. Uh, I just want you to know I'm exhausted, and, and Sydney's doing this for me that she's not getting up. Um, okay, so we got everything but the collegiate record in that in that race. Um, how did it go from your perspective? Pretty well. I think I got out well. Um, I think just my last 50 meters needs some work, but. Other than that, I'm happy. You've raced all over the, the world. You've raced in the biggest meets there is. What's it like to race in an SEC conference championship for the first time? It's crazy, you know. I've watched it on TV for so long, and now to be able to be here and be able to score points for my team is amazing. And the college track's treating you well. It is. Yeah. What, do, what do we like best about it? <laughs> I don't know. It's a lot of hard work, but. I really love my team and my coach, so I'm happy. Hard work, uh, good teammates, good coach, and plus you get to go to school, which is always a great time. Front pack has now caught the chase pack, so this is going to get a little bit ugly because in those turns, the front pack has to go wide, and Jacob Thompson has taken advantage of this confusion and slingshotted himself into the lead ahead of Vincent Kiprop. Thompson with the great speed and strength from that 3,000 last night, carrying it into tonight's final. Thompson still leading. Kiprop is there, as is Keegan. Zach Long starting to drop back. Thompson in very good shape. However, Dwight ran a 401 mile just a couple of weeks ago, so has a fantastic speed kick. Keegan is going on the outside. Kiprop is trying to drop in, but Thompson will not let them in. Keegan going wide. He's running extra distance. 
And we got a lap runner who's staying in there as well. No, that. But Jacob Thompson is the winner of the race, doubling back from the 3,000 yesterday, and he's with John. Guy runs 5,000 meters, and he says, how do I look? I got out of the shower this morning and thought the exact same question without the run. Uh, you were running one against three there. How do you handle that? Uh, you know, used to it now. I've been in the SEC for three years. It's always super competitive with the Arkansas guys, the Ole Miss guys, and now, you know, the contingent of Kenyans from Alabama. So we knew that was, uh, that was the – they're going to be there coming in, so totally ready for it. Just wanted to stick right behind them. Uh, Made a really bad tactical errors in the 3K last night. It cost me, ended up getting fourth behind a couple of them. So didn't want to let that happen again. So I just waited to the right moment, tried to be way more patient, and uh, it worked out perfectly. And then the last 200 were fighting it, or you felt good the whole time? Uh, I felt good. I, you know, Kiprop came up my shoulder. I think it was Kiprop with uh, about 150 to go, and I knew I had to keep the inside lane and not give up any ground because it's so hard to pass on the banks. Uh, so I just held my ground, and the last last straightaway, Kiprop got me by 0.01 last night in the 3K. I wasn't. We're going to let that happen again. Not going to happen to the 5K. Jacob Thompson, he's the winner, and he looks marvelous. More track coming after this.